everybody knows that you love great skin. Kids, now we're going to make some bids. We're gonna see what God did. What he does. Everyone knows that you love these bids. Let's go! Hey boys and girls, it's Mr. Shaw and baby Alistair. Say hi. We are here today with Grace Kids Vids where we are going to grow with God. Today we have some really fun and exciting things to share with you. First up, last week was Halloween, so a lot of you went out and got candy. And so I had this thought that let's see if our staff at church can name that candy. Let's check out something really sweet. Hi, I'm Mrs. Harder. Hi, kids. How are you? Hey, guys. I'm Pastor Greg. Glad to see you. Hey, everybody. I am James Dwyer, youth pastor. Pastor Benji. Glad to see you. All right. Hey, guys. I'm Jeff Hart, We begin our epic showdown with these four titans as they get ready to taste some candy. Mrs. Harder has reasons to win. But watch out, because Pastor Greg has Twix up his sleeve. Pastor James is rolling hard with a hundred grand, and Pastor Benji has the almond joy, joy, joy down in his heart. Let's have them pick them up, taste them, tell us what they eat, and then the first to name them will be the big winner. Let's go. Three, two, one, eat those candies. Chocolatey. Crunchy. It is crunchy, yes. Oh! Sorry! <laughs> Sorry! Ooh, a loss for Mrs. Harder and a win for the three pastors. Now we go to candy number two. Pick up that beautiful chocolate morsel. Check it out and get ready to eat it. Three, two, one! It's tasty like a grape. It's a Milky, Milky Way! Milky Way! There's so much milk in the Milky Way! Bounding ahead is Pastors James and Benji, followed by Mrs. Harder. Sorry, Pastor Greg. Let's get ready for the final morsel. The different look. It's smaller. It's it's zigzaggies on the it's back. Maybe, maybe it's like a grapefruit instead of a grape. Three, two, one. Eat that candy. This has a little extra on the inside. Like the nuts in there. And there's definitely some nougat. Kudos to anybody that can wow. spell that. Snickers. Snickers. I think it's And our results in third place is Pastor I got three pieces of candy. <laughs> We're glad you're happy about that, Greg. In second place is Mrs. Harder. And the champions are Pastors James and Benji. What candy will you eat today? You did it, Pastor Benji and Pastor James. You are good at identifying candy. Poor Greg, but at least he got candy. Next up, we're going to go to Bible Verses with the Baldazans. Verses with Baldazans. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. Now let's do that one more time. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. Hope you enjoyed Bible Verses with Baldazans. Thank you so much for those Bible Verses. Baldazans, we are glad to learn God's word with you every week. Next step, we're going to go to some Grace families as they share what they're thankful for. I'm thankful for my chicken, Wendy, and God, and the Bible. I'm thankful for my chicken, Annie, God, and the Bible, and my friends. I'm thankful for a safe place to live. I'm thankful for prayer. I'm thankful for friends and family. And we're also thankful for you! It is good to be thankful. We hope that you are praising the Lord. 
Just like baby Alistair is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next up, we're going to go to today's lesson with two very special teachers, Noelle Hartman and Mrs. Winger. Hi, kids. It's good to be with you. I'm so excited today. I have a partner to help us learn the meaning and the reason for today's parable. But before we start, I want you to be thinking about the silliest, most foolish thing you have ever done. We'll talk about that later. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we present a modern version of the parable of the wise and foolish builders. We have our regular newscast with a very serious warning. Listen up, folks. There is a doozy of a storm approaching Santa Maria. We have never seen such a menacing sky and radar shows it will be here by nightfall. Prepare your home for the worst rainstorm, flooding, and high winds ever experienced on the Central Coast. Homes on cliffs are especially at risk. Warning, if you live on a cliff, evacuate immediately. Now back to the news with my co-anchor, Mrs. Miller. But I've decided that we're going to pause the interrupted newscast with another interruption. So, Noelle, I just want to know this. Who would be so foolish to build a house on sandstone on a sandstone cliff, Noelle? Well, it seems that throughout the ages, people have wanted a fabulous view so badly they decided it was worth the risk. Well, then you know how that ends up. In the Bible story, it says, and great was the fall of it when the foolish builder builds his house on sand. Well, that makes me wonder, what's the most foolish thing you have ever done? Me. Well, when I was little, I used to yell at my friends for no reason, and then they wouldn't want to play with me anymore. I wonder why. <laughs> well, that was silly. In fact, that was a train wreck waiting yeah. to happen. Well, I'm sad to say that when I was little, I took things that didn't belong to me. That's called stealing, isn't it? Yes. Well, just because you go to church doesn't mean you're a little angel, that's for sure. If I'd have kept that up as a grown-up, because I was really good at it. Um, it would have been like building my life on sand. And I would have been the, the wreck. I mean, seriously, my life would have been a wreck. I might have even ended up in jail. I mean, it's against the law to steal. Well, yeah. in fact, stealing goes against God's way and God's word. Yikes. But... God loved me so much that he sent Jesus to be my savior and rescued me from me. 2 Timothy 2.19 says, God's truth stands like a firm foundation stone with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his. Whew, it's true. He knows all of me. He knows my name. Until I became a follower of Jesus from my heart, I was a faker. But now I am sure my life is built on the most firm foundation of the universe, Jesus Christ, Lord of all. So kids, what's the most foolish thing that you've ever done? After you share this with a friendly listener, think about how going in that direction might direct your life badly a crash that will surely happen. But remember this. Jesus is the most firm foundation for your life. His truth will help you stand in any storm of life. Rain, flood, or wind. Nothing can take his love away from you. What great news. So, Mrs. Winger. Yeah. What is the big idea of this parable? Well, it's that you should build your life on Jesus because he is a firm foundation. He said it himself, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. In all other paths, all other ground is like sinking sand. Ooh, have you ever seen quicksand? It is so scary. But Mrs. Winger, yeah. what if I'm not strong enough? What if I go off the wrong Well, the first thing you do is turn your heart to God. Don't run away from him because he's your rescuer. Say you're sorry and mean it from your heart. Then remember how much Jesus loves you. He died for you. He knows your name. He's your best friend. So remember this, the parables remind us that the Lord will seek you when you go astray. Like one, the parable of the lost sheep. He will seek you and bring you home because he loves you. And two, like the lost coin, he will search and search for you. And when he finds you, he will have a party because you are safe and close to his heart. And like the lost son, he will watch and wait in love until you turn your heart to him. Then he will run to you and give you the best hug you have ever known. In return, you will love him fiercely and you will be stronger and stronger when temptation comes in your path. Well, have you ever had temptation? Yeah. Did you know what to do? Yeah. Well, sort of. Sort of. God helps me. Okay, well, you know what's a good idea? It's to practice. Let's, Let's do practice. it. No! I'm going to follow Jesus. Jesus? Yes. What? What does that mean? Well, when you put your trust in him and you follow him, then you will have eternal life and he will save you. But why are you standing taller than me? Because Jesus is the rock and the firm foundation. For your life? Yes, for your whole life. Well, boys and girls, this is WGKC. Signing off for now. Thank you so much for that lesson. To remember today's lesson, we're going to go back to scripture sketches with our buddy, your big brother, my son, Wesley. Let's go. Hi, everybody. My name is Wesley, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw a thunder cloud that reminds us that Jesus holds us even in the storm. Let's get started. So we're gonna start first start by drawing a bump. Then we're gonna draw two more. One of them's gonna be a little small. Then I'm gonna draw a big one. Then another one. I'm gonna draw a line down. We're gonna basically draw a zigzag. Another diagonal. So I'm gonna draw this three more times. Four, five, six. Okay. Now, I'm gonna draw a small U while it's going behind the mouth. And I'm gonna make the mouth going up higher. Then I'm going to draw a line at the top. I'm going to connect the lightning bolt line to the top of the mouth. Then I'm going to complete by tracing the line for the lightning bolt to make it look thicker. Then we can draw that small U back down. Now I'm going to draw eyes. I'm going to draw little circles. Now we can connect the line. So we're gonna draw a line, and then imagine that line going through the lightning bolt, come out that side and up. And then I'm gonna draw little water drops. So I'm gonna draw, basically, let's draw a U, 
and then it's gonna have a point at the end. All right, I'm gonna do that a couple more times. Okay, I finished drawing my water drops, and I also added faces on all of mine. Um, that's it. I'm gonna write thunder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna color, and I'm gonna fast forward this part, but you can um, pause the video to take time to draw your, or color your clouds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey, boys and girls. I just got an idea. Why don't you go out in your garden or maybe in the playground and see if you can find a rock. I found rocks on the beach at Carpinteria Skate Beach that are amazing. You could take the rock and paint or use a Sharpie or in a sticker even, right? And Put a cross on it or any symbol that reminds you of Jesus and just put it where you can see it. Maybe by your bed or maybe in your planter just outside your front door. And it will remind you to take Jesus with you and be strong in your faith and that Jesus is the firm foundation. See you later. We hope you're doing well, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Say bye! Woo! Go get the camera! Wow!